Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are longtime chess fans. Some of you are chess fans of just the last two years. Some of you only got into chess because of our cheating scandal recently. And some of you just clicked on a chess video for the first time in your life, thanks to the YouTube algorithm. Well, welcome to the world of chess. My name is Levy. I'll be taking you through your chess journey. Regardless of your foray into chess and your experience level, uh, the most popular chess player in the world right now is named Hans Niemann. And this whole cheating scandal, the lawsuit and all of those things, uh, will not take away from the fact that he is still playing over-the-board chess, high-level competitive events. He's actually currently playing a chess tournament in Spain called Ejo Brigat Open, and after four rounds of action, he is 4-0, with some extremely convincing, dominant, and creative victories. And the tournament's not over, but I feel empowered to share this video with you, uh, because I'm gonna give you an update. He's gained all the rating points from all these games, and he's up to 35th in the world. So in this video, we're going to take a look at these games. We're going to follow this tournament to its conclusion. If he continues like this, he's going to be up to top 15, top 20 in the world. And this story just keeps getting more fascinating. Before we jump into the games, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Incogni. Folks, it's 2022. The world is more borderless and online than ever before. You probably don't realize this, but your personal information is being leaked via hacks and literally sold by data brokers. And I mean your name, your address, your contact information, potentially your social security number, and your shopping habits, and even so much more. The smallest inconvenience of this is you getting a daily telemarketing call. But that's where Incogni comes in. They fight on your behalf to remove your personal data from data brokers. All you have to do is create an account and grant them the ability to work on your behalf. And then they'll get to work removing your data from the deepest, darkest corners of the web. You are going to be shocked in how many places there is random scattered personal information about yourself. I highly recommend a service like Incogni because it helps you protect yourself against the small annoyances of the world getting more digital and also potentially the far more serious ones. And if you're interested in Incogni, I want you to click the link in the description below. And the first hundred people to use the code Gotham We'll get 20% off. Now that you're done protecting your data, let's get back to the video. We kick things off in the very first round in Spain. Hans' opponent is named David uh, Fitzsimons? Fitzsimmons? Which one is it? Because, like, as an American, there would be two M's, like Ben Simmons. <laughs> you know, S-I-M-M-O-N-S. -M -M -S. But I don't know, Fitzsimmons, Fitzsimons. Uh, David from Ireland. Uh, and Hans begins the tournament and this game with the move D4. And we get what's known as a Catalan. So G3 played by Hans Black. Uh, has the option to take on c4 in the Catalan, play bishop b4 and so on. Um, he chooses to play bishop 2 e7, bishop g2, and we have castles, castles, and c6. Now, this is a closed Catalan. This is a Catalan where black is going to be playing ultra solid type of chess. Uh, Hans plays knight c3, very happily giving up the pawn on c4 to try to either take a commanding control of the center or just very naturally win this pawn back. That's also very much an option. Um, now, after the move knight e5 is played, uh, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> not after the move knight e5 is played, black has the option to take on c4, but black is again playing a very KG style chess like this, okay? So everything is developed, but everything is so passive, right? And now it's sort of up to white to push forward. Now, Hans plays this very interesting move knight d2. I've never seen this move. Um, there are other options here for white, like immediately beginning an expansion, uh, or playing the queen out to d3 and defending over here. Knight d2 defends, also prepares e4, and activates this bishop a little bit. So knight d2, a very nice move. Black strikes with b5, basically saying, all right, you wanna, you wanna get something going over there? Let's go. Hans locks it down with the move c5. Very interesting. So, position is locked. Black might rely on this move e5 in the future. Uh, not right now, because apparently it's bad uh, after take, take, and this move, uh, knight takes d5. Very nice little tactical shot, uh, which strikes in the center, and the knight is just loose. I mean, it's just, it's just loose, and you can't take with the queen because you lose your queen. You know what they say, if you're going to lose a knight, you might as well lose a queen, right? That's how you play chess. So b4 is played by black, and Hans undevelops. I mean, this just looks completely bogus, right? Like, ridiculous. But Hans is relying on the long-term long -term ideas of his position. And he's going to rely on a3, a4 stuff to break free on the queen side, and also e4. Those are going to be his two pawn breaks. If you told Hans right now you can't move your a or e pawns, white loses the game. Like, white is just relying on those two pawn breaks to break free. Now, black plays e5 himself, and then goes like this. So now you got two loose pawns here. What is white going to do? Plays knight f3, 
anticipates this, and there goes the E pawn. A nice and solid position, and there goes the A pawn, right? I told you, E and A pawns, that's what white is looking for, and now white plays knight BD2. Position is still very flexible, but white is going to rely on the C file, right? So he's going to rely on the C file pressure, and when black takes this pawn on E5, for a very brief moment, black is actually up a pawn. And, it, I mean, this position just looks really good for black. Black is about to play knight to d3, just winning the game on the spot. And he has the bishop pair if you take the knight. So naturally, taking the knight can't be the right move. Wait, why is the eval still showing 0. 0.7? 0. 0.7? That's insane. Black is up a pawn and has the two bishops. Yes, but in chess, you have to make moves. And as it's about to be discovered... This is an illusion, the black advantage. This bishop is completely useless. Like, completely useless. It plays no role in this game whatsoever. And not to mention the fact that this bishop is also about to be useless, and this pawn is going to fall, which means these pawns are going to be weak the rest of the game. Hans grabs his pawn back and is like, yeah, you ain't getting me today. Look at this. Rook c8, you want to trade? I'm going to attack your queen first. You move your queen. I'm going knight d4. Queen trade doesn't scare me. Rook trade doesn't scare me. Bishop for knight trade doesn't scare me. What does Hans have here? A superior pawn structure and slightly more active pieces. Not just slightly more active, more useful. As I said, I will say it once again, this bishop is catching strays this whole game. That bishop sucks, okay? The bishop ain't scaring anybody. Queen trade doesn't matter. Rook trade doesn't matter. Knight back to e2. This pawn's dead. This rook cannot come into c3. That pawn is a goner. Knight f4 is on the way as well. White has a great position. Um, and, you know, black actually defended quite well. He, he, he was in this game. Black can still get to an endgame. What black really would love here is, uh, is an endgame where the bishops are an opposite color and the advantage is not so massive. Because the truth is, if black loses everything here and goes to rook and bishop versus rook, that's still, kind, that's still a draw. You could lose that, but it's a draw. So it's not the worst thing in the world. You got to go for the opposite colored bishop endgame. But Hans is going to try to get the maximum type of opposite colored bishop endgame. And he does it like this. And black gets his bishop locked out. Uh, rook. The rook needed to be back there to defend. Because now that Hans locks this, that rook is never getting out. And you'll notice this bishop is completely blunted by these pawns. And being blunted is not always the worst thing in the world. Sometimes you just need to chill out a little bit. But in this case... It's very bad. Not a good thing. Uh, dark squares ain't looking good. And uh, rook d5. And I mean, Hans is just going to hunt these pawns down. Like, the rook... Uh, look at this. The rook is just boxed out. It just absolutely cannot do anything. One pawn falls. He's going for the other pawns. Rook d5. The bishop's going to have to stick around. And he just attacks everything. Black just can't defend. I mean, black is literally losing all his pawns. This rook just hasn't moved. How are you going to play a rook and bishop endgame, but the rook isn't moving, Right? It's terrible. I mean, I'm not saying he's playing terribly. I'm just playing he's getting outplayed. That happens. And Hans just walks the king down and ends the game in a very stylish way. Finally, the rook moved! Rook c1, the first rook move in like 20 turns? I don't know. Something crazy. Nice little finish here. g5 check. Black's options. Lose the bishop. Or get mated. Uh, bishop e2. Oh, that's not mate. Bishop f7. <laughs> bishop e2 is winning, but geez. Oh, International Master can't spot mate in one. That's why I'm watching the game and they're playing it. Very convincing first round win, but all right, what is this? 330 point disparity. Hans, stop bullying people on the playground. Game two. Hans is going up in rating again, playing Karen Movsisyan from, uh, uh, from Armenia. Now, it's not, it's, not, it's not Karen, it's Karen, right? Is that how I would say it? Armenians? It's Karen Movsisyan, right? It's not Karen, it's Karen. I don't know. I'm doing my best. He plays, Mofsisian plays a very interesting opening. He just gives Hans the center completely. We can actually play it from Hans' perspective, I think. I think this might be fun. Um, so d3, knight f6, knight f3. And this is uh, just a King's Indian attack by white. That's what white is doing. White is playing a King's Indian, but with the white pieces. Hans playing very solidly, nothing special. Takes, takes, bishop develops, knight bd7, solidifying this, which in turn solidifies that. Knight c3, and now basically saying, like, what's the bishop going to do? You're going to take, you're going to go back. The bishop takes. Now, the computer hates this. It thinks that white has nothing for the bishop pair. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, white's next move is d4. 
And the idea of d4 is to get a position like this, playing against the isolated pawn. Black has an isolated pawn, white has a blockade of the isolated pawn, good pressure on it, like what Hans had last game. And Hans is like, nope, so I'm gonna blunt the bishop on g2, which again, in some cases good, in this case bad. Uh, knight e5 played, and Hans is just like, okay, well, your horse walked into my territory, so I'm going to attack it. Now, here, white plays a weird move. Um, a move that makes sense, but a little bit of a weird move. Um, what should you do when your piece is attacked, right? You should defend it. Now, I, I don't know. There is en passant in this position, which is probably what white didn't like. But at least then you can do this. And if this, it's not the end of the story because you can pin the bishop, like, to the queen. And yes... Black is up a pawn, but I don't know. This doesn't look that horrible. Instead of that, white plays the move queen b3, which counterattacks the pawn. But I don't exactly understand how he's going to win it back. Because he goes here, and Hans guards the pawn, and... Well, black has seven pawns, and white has six. You know, I really wish Grandmasters played like this against me sometimes. I mean, white just sort of gave up a pawn and was like, all right, I'm going to win that pawn back in the future. And Hans was like... How? Attacks the rook. Rook defends everything. And I'm protecting you from going here. Okay, you kick me out? Okay, now I overprotect my d5 pawn. I mean, it's basically just a huge battle for d5. But black has four pieces defending it. I mean, you just, you just, I'm not, just not gonna let you win it. And on, at some point, I'm gonna go a6. And by some point, I mean right now, everything in black's position is protected with the exception of this rook. But like, nobody cares about that rook. I guess you can argue the queen is not protected, but... I mean, the most powerful pieces account for themselves, right? And also speak for themselves. Queen a5, queen f5, and now we have this weird dance where black is like, I'm better, but how do I win, right? Like, I have an advantage, but how, do I, how am I going to win this game? Rook c7, knight e2, right? Karen's going to move his knight into the center of the board. And Han's like, mm, queen h5. Knight f4 looking nice. Queen e5 comes back. You're going to poke and prod. How are you going to break through here? Queen b6. So, I mean, black is winning, but... Oh, 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 there we go. All right, now we're kicking the queen out, and he comes back. Rook c5, queen b4. Where's the breakthrough coming? Aha, there it is, h5. Hans is like, all right, I think I just got to go for it. I mean, I, I can't do anything else. I'm up a pawn, but I can't really move it forward. All right, we're going to trade the queens. I'm going to improve my position. I'm going to improve my position. Look at this king walk into the center of the board. Hans just won king of the hill, by the way. Should have paused the clock, brought the arbiter. King of the hill, baby, let's go. G4, a little bit of an overreaction by white. He's relying on the fact that these pieces can't take their eyes off D5. Hans just shuts the door and keeps improving his position, just getting maximum, maximum play here, looking to trade off one of the rooks, plants it on B4. Look at this. I mean, just overwhelming the white position slowly but surely on all sides. Look at this, just taking away everything. All the oxygen is disappearing. Rook c5 drops back, looking to get a knight or a bishop in. King d6 finding a way. He trades one rook, brings the king back to the center. b6 is to avoid this. Maybe looking to trade the rook again. Knight e8 reroute. Oh, white shoots out on the queen side. Takes, takes. White is running out of space. He's just running out of space. I mean, white hasn't been able to cross the center line in this game. Look at this. This is the first piece to cross the center line since, like, the opening. I mean, the queen did. But nothing really happened. Hans just goes for a knight end game and traps the knight on the edge of the board. King e5. Knight can't really come off. King is going this way. And uh, that's it. Actually, I think... Um, I don't actually think this move happened. That's the interesting thing. I, uh, I have a feeling that white played this move and resigned. And that's why the king ended up on that square. Because at the end of a game, you have to put the kings to indicate who won. That kind of programs the result of the magnetic board. King on e5 and king on d4 would mean that black won. So I feel like this move was played and Hans played like f5 or something, which just wins on the spot because of this. Um, yeah, I mean, I just sort of said king e5. But I realized I was just talking... And I realized that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. I'm like trying to justify a move and then I'm like... No, I think that's just the end of the game. So, 2-0. Uh, Effortless. Game 3. Hans is playing uh, Nicolosi Cacciavara. No, not Cacciavara. Cacciavara would be Italian. Cacciarava. That's Georgian. 
Uh, I've never heard of this guy in my life. He's 25, 30, and he's an IM. He's probably going to be GM soon. Uh, so my, I'm going to preface this game by saying this was a perfect game by Hans. Like, he didn't make an inaccuracy. Um, a lot of that is opening preparation. So you're going to see Hans's opening preparation here. Actually, Hans's opening preparation in this game, I had it in my notes too from like a long time ago. I just never had a chance to use it against anybody because I'm garbage. So Hans in this game plays... Um, just the regular English, c4, e5, g3. Black plays a very aggressive line, and the best line, trying to go for d5. Hans does this, and to the untrained eye, this looks nuts, right? Like, super passive. But this is theory. This has been played before. Um, and there's this line where black plays knight a6 and bishop e7, and white relies on some sort of center pawn break. But there's another idea in these positions to play the move b4. It's like a ridiculous idea, but you can just start throwing your queenside pawns. And it never works for me, because I'm trash. Uh, but in this game, black went here, which walks directly into it. And I was like, why did he do that? Clearly, he knows something I don't. But he was definitely surprised by this move, because from the opening, Hans got a mammoth position, and then Hans used this very, very nice move. This is, this is prep. Um, this move also came up in my notes a long time ago. The best move here for white is the absolutely wicked move, queen b1! Queen to b1, this is an exceptional idea. And this is one of the ideas of this prep. The point is to boost your bishop to create this threat, to hit the queen, oops, to hit the queen and be protected. But also, it's better to go here than here, because from here you not only guard the bishop, you see this pawn in the future and that pawn. Incredible. I mean, queen b1 is just a spectacular move, and from this point forward, black just disintegrated. I mean, black basically cannot defend against this and this and this and all this stuff. So black goes here, Hans plays knight, takes e4, hits the queen, then he takes on f6, and black has the option to ruin his structure forever or go here and lose this pawn. He chooses there and loses this pawn, and the craziest thing is the knight guards the rook. I mean, white's position just works together flawlessly. So I told you, it's a perfect game, which nowadays if you say someone played a perfect game, it's like, oh, good job. And if it's just Hans, you know, he's got this whole crazy thing going on. So it's like he never gets the benefit of the doubt. Uh, so I'm going to tell you right now, give the man the benefit of the doubt because I've had this same Queen B1 move uh, in my notes, which, which means that if I have it in my notes, like a thousand people have it in their notes. And Hans gets a chance to detonate it. And um, it's so nasty, this idea. And white is just a pawn up. Pawn up and... That's it. I mean, at this level, being a pawn up on an open board like this, this is like being, you know, 10, uh, 11 v 10 in footy, uh, which, you know, wins most of the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, Hans just takes the center, solidifies his center. Remember Hans's structure in the other game, the dark squares? Beautiful stuff here. And all he has to do now is just improve on the queen side. He just bolsters his queen side. He knows what kind of an end game he needs. Look at this. Light squared bishop, six dark squared pawns. Beautiful complex of colors fusing together. They trade, and he trades everything. Like, he literally just trades everything, improves his structure, doesn't allow his king to be weakened, and black just goes crazy. I mean, black could sit around here and do nothing. White will play queen c5, get an end game like this. This is a completely winning and completely effortless end game for white. And if you're confused, black has no play. So white will go here or here. This pawn cannot move. Then I will effortlessly bring my king and I will win. Black has nothing. So instead of sitting there and getting smushed, black plays g5, Hans takes, black goes here, Hans takes. Now Hans is up three pawns instead of being up one. And uh, he looks for counterplay, but the king is actually totally safe. There are no checks at all. Counterattack and defending of the king. Black plays rook c8, queen f4. Uh, you can play rook here, but I will mate you. And I think that's how the game actually ended. Yeah, Hans just left his king sort of standing, queen f4, and uh, black decided, all right, I'm going to checkmate you. And uh, Hans checkmated his opponent first with queen f7 and rook a8. Have you ever seen a more effortless game against an extremely good player? I mean, he just, he just smashed his opponent. Like I, he just, but again, it's prep. Like, that's the thing about chess. Like, you know, I just showed that video yesterday with the 40 moves of prep. This is a nasty idea, and black got caught. Like, black, I think, just was not expecting b4. Which, I have to tell you, is kind of weird, because that's a very natural move in this position. 
right? Like, and so I'm saying, like, B4 has been in my notes, but, I mean, he just steamrolls. And now, in game four, Hans is playing uh, a, a Russian-Spanish, Spanish-Russian Grandmaster, who now, I think, lives in Spain and represents Spain, uh, Daniel Yufa. Uh, and this one, Hans, again, has the black pieces. His opponent is rated 25-90, so very, very strong player. And here, Hans also plays my prep. <laughs> Not my prep, but uh, I played like this, too. I also played this in a tournament against um, David Berches, who's a uh, Hungarian Grandmaster. I lost, again, because I'm trash. But let's see how Hans does it. This is one of the most insane chess games I've ever seen. So if you had the patience, you stuck around, prepare to get rewarded. So Hans attacks this, right? So what do you do? Guard it. Or guard it. Nope. Nope. What? Knight c2, though. What is Daniil doing? What? White is down a rook. Why is the position not winning for black? Okay, so I can grab that too and lose, right? Yeah. You know why? King safety is more important than material here. The king for black is wide open, and apparently it's just like a losing position. Apparently queen a4 and black just loses. Isn't that insane? You can win white's knight and rook, and you're losing. Because you have no development and your king is weak. Okay, well that's not how the game ended. So after this, Hans just took back, and I guess the knight is just gonna perish. Like, the knight went in, it knew what it was getting itself into, and... Listen, I gotta tell you folks, visually this position looks spectacular for white. I mean, does it not? Like, just forget the fact that white is down a rook for a second. I love how white has no rush to win the rook back. White's like, yeah, you suck, I'm gonna win. Bishop b4. Bishop b3. Hans plays knight f6. So Hans got to catch up in development, right? White plays queen d3. Look at this position. All of white's pieces standing together. The rook is going to take the knight, so you will win that knight back, and then it's just going to be a rook for a piece. And white has a dominant position. But black is going to play h6 to prevent anything from coming here, and will get his king to safety. And the longer this game goes on, the closer black is going to get to victory. And you know because you clicked on this video and listened to the intro that probably black is going to win. Unless your attention span is not that good. Happens. Rook a1, Hans plays castles, a3, and uh, Hans decides to trade. Why? Because he's winning. What do you do when you're up pieces? You got to trade pieces, right? So right now, white has queen, two bishops, knight, and rook. Black has queen, two rooks, knight, and bishop. But I got to tell you, the more pieces that come off the board, uh, the better black's position is going to get, right? So queen a5. White plays h3. A little passive. Uh, Yufa could have just put his foot on the gas. It's easier said than done, but you know, d5 and so on. Plays h3. Uh, Hans plays rook d8, natural move. Uh, knight d2. Knight d7. Both guys trying to dance their knight to the other side of the board. Maybe e5, maybe c5, maybe f5 in the future. g4 prevents f5. So f6. I hate that move. But I guess it's necessary to be able to bring the bishop back here and protect the king. F4. I mean, this is... This is a fight, okay? Like, this is, this is a fight. This is a fight, fight, fight. This is crazy. Um, so, rook e8. C4. <laughs> Folks, did I not tell you this is one of the most insane positions? You <laughs> what is going on? Look at the C4, D4, E4, F4, G4. It just might as well put A4 and H4. This is crazy. But you know what happens in positions like this? The computer will tell you that nobody can make progress. If white tries to jump into the black position, white might get clapped. If black tries to jump into the white position, I don't even know how you're going to do that. I don't know how. So white plays queen c2. He does that to avoid knight c5 and getting hit here. B5. All right, Hans is trying to answer back, but now c5. I mean, why did Hans do that? I told you, Hans tried to extend, but now, now c5 shuts everything down. Queen c7. Dude. Look at this. This is nuts. Hans plays a6. Solid. White plays a5. Just completely shutting the door on the black position. Just You cannot do anything. The equivalent of an older brother just sitting on a younger brother. Okay? a6. Maybe f5 too. Something like this. Just take everything away. a5. Knight f8. I mean, Hans just sitting there like, I don't know. I can't do much. Or can I? No. Probably not. <laughs> All right, queen d7, I'm going to attack your pawn. You're going to defend it. Wait a minute. 
Why'd had to go there? White didn't want to go here because he would take his eye off this pawn, I guess. So he does it this way. But now I have various tactics. And my knight can reroute this way too. The knight needed to be here where it, would be, where it wouldn't be a target. And all of a sudden, Hans completely seizes the game. Knight back to d2. Knight transfers to b5. Oh my goodness, you'll notice that white now has to move again. White wasted time, which in chess is precious. Knight to c4 looking for all of this. Uh-oh, it's all falling apart. When you bring five pawns to the center rank, it's your responsibility to be able to defend them. And white is unable to do that here as Hans not only picks off one, he picks off a second one and a third one. The whole center's falling apart. One pawn move is all it took. White had a nice position and Hans said, what's up? And that's chess. None of your pieces seem to be doing much. And all of a sudden, one, spit, one pawn move activates the rest of the position, like a spark plug. Take, take, take. Rook back to e7. Nice idea here. Bishop f6 sacrificing, trying to open up the black king, but that's not going to work. I'm just going to trade everything. Bishop c6. Queen e7. He didn't take because he didn't want to give up f7. Um, and uh, yeah, queen takes f7. If you take, I take. Black resigned. And before I hit stop recording, I'm actually going to check in on um, Hans's current position. He's currently playing with the white pieces against Kirill Alexienko in round five. He has an interesting position. I think he's playing for two results. Hans is up to 27-10, 27-15. He's number 35 in the world, and he's undefeated thus far after four rounds at the third Ayo Brigat Open. Crazy stuff. Amazing scenes. Uh, hate him or love him. Don't want me to cover him. I will continue to do so uh, because it's epic for content and for all of us. And listen, as much as folks complain about things like, ah, I don't show many more this and that, they're going to watch. You're going to watch because this is the most captivating story in chess. Either it is or it isn't. Right? So that's that. I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.